Hello and welcome to Beamer Folk. Okay, this is the second of my lockdown shielding repairs and it's pertaining to an Onkyo CR515DAB compact audio system. It's provided excellent service. It's, it's a very good unit. Uh, it's not a main front room hi-fi system. I use it for my den, but uh, it's proved to be very reliable, except for the CD player. I bought this about 10 years ago, and it came with two speakers and cost about £300. Two years after the um, purchase, the CD unit started playing up, going intermittent on CDs, not finding the start of a CD, not liking track one, maybe playing track one again, but one of the other tracks would go intermittent. So these were very positive signs of the optic pickup head assembly laser dimming. I knew from the outset that this probably wasn't a very expensive CD player, but after two years of light use, I thought it let me down. It let the unit down a little bit. But anyway, as I had an alternative CD player, it didn't particularly bother me that the CD player uh, never worked. Until, um, I suppose, about four years ago, I saw on eBay and you can pick these up, the optical assembly unit. So I um, purchased that four years ago with the intention of fitting it. Well, one thing led to the other and it sat in the box for four years. And so I thought I'd take this opportunity to repair it. The laser pickup assembly is KSS, that's K for kick, S for sugar, S for sugar, hyphen, 213C, C for cat. I didn't think for one moment this is an original part. I don't believe that Sony actually manufactures this anymore. So all those parts you see well-known auction site are probably copies and I can't guarantee the quality of these. The one that I picked up obviously worked, but I'm not sure whether all would do so. The part that I've got actually had a Sony embossed on it, but perhaps they all do, and maybe that it's of no significance whatsoever. Anyway, um, the circuit diagram for this uh, CR515DAB, I've put a link down in the description uh, linking to a CR315DAB. Uh, that's the nearest I could get to it. It's, it's identical. I'm not quite sure what the difference is between them, but it looked to me more or less um, identical. Right, my next slide here is out of focus. I do apologise for that. I took the picture in low light. I shouldn't have done, and this is the result. But nevertheless, it clearly shows that the front panel is in two pieces. There is a fascia front panel with all the printing on and a back front panel. The front front panel unclips very easily with a small screwdriver here, here and its equivalent positions here and here underneath the unit and it pulls away. There is no need to remove the volume control. It's firmly in place. Originally, when I tried to deal with this, I actually tried to pull this knob off. It didn't um, do that. And there is fear of damaging the encoder volume control assembly behind. In fact, I was rather surprised that I didn't do that. But it doesn't need to be tugged on to be or pulled off. Uh, the fascia just simply unclips and gets removed. The other thing I would say with this clip, you can see here that this is a very compact 
assembly. This is the CD unit in here and underneath is a circuit board with lots of surface mount components that could be easily damaged by putting a, an unthought out screwdriver into this area or dropping something onto it. So you need to be careful. There is another um, point here and that is that the metalwork on this unit is quite badly finished. Particularly, you can see this bit of metalwork here. There's a bit of metalwork that comes across there. Another one on the other side of this board coming across. The edges are quite sharp. And actually, I managed to cut myself on it. So please um, be warned. Right, well, this is the top view looking down. And you can see clearly the CD unit. But it, it clearly shows the CD in, in there. The front panel itself gets removed by undoing two red screws underneath, um, under the chassis. And once they are undone, this front panel pulls completely forward. The CD unit itself gets removed by four red screws four red screws only there's a position there a position in here a position in here and another one in here and once you've got those four screws removed well i i did that and the unit just didn't budge the cedar unit didn't budge so i went around it and around it and around it and i didn't have at the time a circuit diagram or assembly diagram for the for the 315, I hadn't found that yet. But so I went around it looking for secret hidden screws in this unit. I was a bit concerned, just, just couldn't really budge it. And in the end, what is the missing bit of knowledge here is that the CD unit is actually glued onto the chassis. And when I say glued, it's not a, a dry glue, it's actually that sort of bitumen black glue but nevertheless, it holds it completely fast. Once you've got the four screws out, you're seriously looking for additional screws. And the only way I could actually remove this carefully, because you don't want to apply too much force on this, is to use one of those uh, box knives, which uh, have an extended blade, you know, where you break off the old blade, uh, extend the blade so it's very thin, and mind your fingers, quite sharp, under the printed circuit board carefully, because I said that this is a component laden printed circuit board underneath the CD drive unit. And where the legs uh, reach the chassis, I gently slip the blade between the chassis and those feet of this CD unit. And I first lifted the front one here, then the second front one here, and then got a little bit of movement on the CD uh, unit. And then finally, I was able to reach the two at the back here and the unit came away. A bit tricky. I really did think that there were secret screws in this, but, but no, no, it just stuck in place. And I've never encountered that before. At this point, I'd like to add that to remove the front panel, once you've undone those screws, this connector here needs to be pulled off and it's good to just mark where as it were the right hand side which is what i did here i marked with a red felt tip uh, pen just to make sure that when you put it back you're not attempting to put this around the wrong way there is an additional um, plug and socket here a wire it's a three wire cable assembly and it unplugs from the printed circuit board here. There's also an earth clip. You can kind of see it in here. It's, an, it's, an, it's a chassis clip that has a wire attached to the uh, naught volts on the printed circuit board of the front panel. That kind of pulls off. And I think there was one along here as well, although I can't see it. Uh, and if there's one there, do likewise there, then the whole of this front panel will turn round 
and lie on its side on this side so that you can access the front here. Here we are. You can actually see the um, that's a CD unit propped up with the um, uh, pickup assembly box empty. I hasten to add, and uh, you can see that this is the three wire cable assembly here, and you can see how you'd need to disconnect these cable assemblies here. I would have a tendency to not unplug at the CD unit because this is delicate mechanics going up here I always if I can um, I prefer to remove the plugs and sockets on the board here because I really wouldn't want to damage or disturb the assembly of the CD unit. These are the parts that I used for this repair. You can see that this is the laser pickup assembly and here's the infamous little pot. I remove the cable here, again marking uh, the polarization orientation of the cable assembly going in here. This was the old unit. And the grease I used for the mechanics on the, lay, on the uh, drive unit was a grease that um, I used on model cars, uh, plastic to plastic, plastic to metal grease. And uh, it's, it was extraordinarily good for that. It works perfectly well for a CD drive. I have used it on a number of occasions. I have experience with it. And it's a superb form of grease, not cheap. Incidentally, the reason why we use specialist greases, greases? grease for this type of assembly, mechanical, plastic mechanical, metal, work is that if you use ordinary grease some of them can actually interfere with the the plastic itself can degrade very slightly or expand and as you've got precision sliding parts and gears this can interfere with the mechanism so it's very important to use a grease on metal to plastic plastic to plastic gearing uh, and drives etc that don't interfere in such a way. Also these specialist creases don't attract electrostatically dirt uh, from the atmosphere. When your new pickup optic assembly arrives it will have a solder block between these two points here. That needs to be removed. Should it not be removed, your CD player will not work. It's best to remove this at the last possible moment, simply because the link is there, the solder link is there, to prevent electrostatic damage to the um, laser diode. OK, as we see here in this slide, you have the CD unit assembly complete here removed. And you can see the four screw points here and the remains of glue that glued it to the chassis that caused me a problem. This is the cable from the laser optic assembly itself. And Contrary to what I said about the two connectors earlier, I found it difficult to remove this particular cable assembly from the printed circuit board. My sort of large fingers didn't quite, wasn't quite able to get into the space. So the only thing I could do is uh, remove it from the CD unit itself. I chose to do this also because this particular cable assembly wasn't on the immediate mechanics of the optic assembly. So I felt reasonably safe to actually remove that one. But there we go. Um, all rules occasionally um, get challenged. Now, at this point, there's no point in reinventing the wheel. So what I'm going to suggest to you and do come back to me because there is a specific 
aspect of this onchio unit that is not included in um, my recommended video here but this chap 12 volt vids has done an excellent disassembly and repair of this particular uh, sony pickup assembly cd assembly and there's no point in me replicating it because he did such a superb job the part he's done is to do with a multiplay cd unit and the bit that's relevant to us here today uh, starts at 5 minutes 40 seconds. That, um, that doesn't mean to say you shouldn't see the rest of his video because it is excellent. But the bit that's relevant to us is at that point in time. But as I said, do come back to me here because I've got a point to add that's specifically unique to this Onkyo video. Welcome back. So what's unique about this Onkyo Hi-Fi unit that wasn't covered by 12 volt vids video? And that's simply because when I first reassembled this, I put it back together again and lo and behold, it didn't work. In fact, the mechanism fouled with the surface of the CD drive and um, there was something radically wrong with my reassembly. Uh, so what was it? And uh, I went round and round and round it. And finally, I kind of realized that the suspension to this particular immediate mechanics around the optic assembly wasn't correctly aligned. And what could have caused that? Tuned my thoughts down to these four springs outlined here. And when I looked at them carefully, I suddenly realized that they weren't of the same strengths. The um, strongest springs should be at the front of this assembly here, nearest to the drive opening where you put the CD in, and the weakest two springs, pair of springs, should be at the back. They are differentiated quite clearly here, and it wasn't until I looked at this assembly diagram that I've realised that it's actually very clearly outlined. And the, if you look at the bottom here, the gold spring, which is the weakest pair of springs, um, are coloured gold-ish. And they are the ones, as I've just said, at the back here. And the silver springs, which are the toughest of the four springs, the silver pair, went at the uh, front. And once I reassembled that correct way round, lo and behold, everything worked correctly. And uh, that is the difference. I've not seen spring assembly before on this type of driving unit, and I have a feeling it's been replaced for good or bad with some sort of rubber cushioning on um, other units. I think they found this to be over elaborate. But um, when I first looked at it, I was thinking to myself, well, how can I construct springs to, to align the unit? And um, no, it was just that I hadn't noticed that these springs have different strengths and they have their specific locations on the drive unit. Right, well, I'll just go through the last three slides that I made for this video, and hopefully you'll have your unit back reassembled and working perfectly, as I have. You need to be a bit patient with this. It's very confined here, the space. This video clearly shows the single cable assembly here, which has three wires attached to it. And that goes into a connector up here. You've got the front panel connector going into this socket here. You've got, um, I've got this uh, detached here, which is a chassis connection, which kind of plugs on this rather sharpish metal here. You've got the other um, chassis connector um, here from the front panel 
and there we are and you can see there's a lot going on on this board here and if you were to drop anything onto it as you're disassembling the CD unit likely it's not it would damage this socket here is from the optic uh, laser optic assembly and that just pushes straight back onto there going on to the next slide you can see as I've got the front panel disassembled I put it to one side here and you can do that without disconnecting any more cable assemblies or anything and move on to the next one you can see here it was taken to demonstrate how the optic assembly pickup cable went into this socket here actually the CD unit is moved slightly forward from its position in in reality this point here this screw hole here should be there I hope that you've been successful with your unit uh, mine has proved to be successful and giving me, me good service although as the optic assembly was probably not an original part and costing only nine quid I'm not quite sure how long it's going to last but I suppose it, if it gives me another couple of years or so of uh, reliable service this has been worth it this is Beamer signing out for now